Hey there, it's day 26 of the Techno Evangelist vlog, and today I want to talk about automating your Mac using Hammerspoon. This is a tool that I love using. Well, you know, I don't really notice actually anymore. It just works. I use it, you know, every time I plug in a different keyboard or plug in a monitor, it just works. The possible uses are endless, you know, whatever you want to do to automate your Mac, as I say, plugging in a different keyboard and wanting to switch layouts. When you go home and you want to switch different Wi-Fi or configure different drives that are available, or you attach a different monitor and you want it to recognize that and use a different resolution depending on the monitor, it's amazing. So I use that the first of those three because, well, right now I'm at home and I'm using the Mac keyboard that's on my MacBook Pro. But when I'm at work, I use the Ergodox EZ, which is this amazing keyboard that was started on Kickstarter. And I think it was a Kickstarter. And it's a split design ortho linear keyboard. And it's just magical. It's a mechanical keyboard. And you know, while I love the MacBook Pro's keyboard, just the responsiveness, it feels like a mechanical keyboard. Well, the Ergodox actually is a mechanical keyboard and I just really, really enjoy working with it. Now, I use a different layout. So when I'm on the, the Apple keyboard, I can't really remap the hardware. So I have to have a software remapping to my preferred layout. Now on the Ergodox EZ, I was able to build that into the firmware. In fact, I tweaked it a little bit. And so, well, yeah, it's a different layout. Okay, so maybe I should talk about layouts. So probably everybody you know uses QWERTY. You probably use QWERTY. That is where the first five or six letters on the keyboard are Q, W, E, R, T, and Y. And there's some variations on that depending on what country you're in, but generally everybody uses QWERTY. Then there's probably four or five weird developers in your office that are using Dvorak. Dvorak is a alternate keyboard layout designed in the 1930s to try to make it more efficient to use that keyboard. I guess it was as typewriters got more efficient and less jammy, they were able to make things faster. And then there's probably one really oddball developer that's using Colmac. I, th I think I know one person that uses Colmac. But you're going to need a lot more friends before you find somebody that uses Workman Dead. There it is. So here's the workman layout. And of course, I, I say you're going to need more friends, but we're friends. So you know somebody who uses workman. But even fewer than that, you're needing a lot more friends to find somebody else other than me that also uses workman dead. So the idea of workman dead is that Normally you're in this layout, but then you hit the dead key, which in my case is a comma key, and the keyboard layout switches to this. So you can see that my ring fingers on either hand handle the open parentheses and closed parentheses. So that's pretty interesting. And then of course there's the zero and one, which is the index fingers. There's the moving up to the, the pinky up one, and that's the percent key. And then at and dollar sign, you know, these are keys that I use a lot. And so it's really nice being able to type them without having to reach way up to the number keys. And if you do that a lot, reaching up is kind of a pain. So this just makes things a lot easier on your fingers. Do I type enough to make it worth it? No. Do would I advise anybody who's watching this to switch to Workman Dead? No, it's a stupid idea. Do not do it. I don't know what I was thinking when I did this, but I'm on it now, so I'm kind of stuck. So I use a great tool called Hammerspoon to help me automate switching back and forth between these different keyboard layouts. As I said, on the Mac, I've got the software remapping to Workman Dead, and on the Ergodox EZ, it's in the firmware, so it only knows about Workman Dead. So when I plug that in, I want the Mac to switch to the US layout, and that way it doesn't, it just doesn't realize that it's not that layout. Okay, so you might be thinking, wait a second, that's kind of weird. What are you doing here? Why aren't you just using Control Plane? Control Plane's been around for ages on the Mac. Anybody who cares about this kind of stuff is probably using Control Plane. And yes, control plane is really cool, but as soon as you have a few different scenarios, a few different places and um, some sort of hierarchy of these different places that you want to have different things turned on, it gets to be really, really, really complicated. And I just, 
I, I can't figure it out. I can't get things to work right in Control Plane. And so I use Hammerspoon. Now Hammerspoon uses a programming language called Lua. Uh, Lua is really, really easy to learn. You can probably learn it in 15, 20 minutes. In fact, here's this learn X and Y minutes that talks about Lua and it describes, it shows you how to use Lua by using Lua to describe how to use Lua. It's really kind of meta. You can really learn it super quick. It's built into a lot of games and some people even use it to automate things like Nginx. So once you've got some of the basics going of, of Lua, you can go back to this Hammerspoon website and go through their getting started guide. So here's this getting started guide and it walks you through everything you need to know to use Hammerspoon in an interesting way. And in fact, there's a fancy reloading script in here fancy config reloading, which is great. And so this says, anytime you make a change to the Hammerspoon configuration file, reload the Hammerspoon configuration file into Hammerspoon so that you've got the latest stuff. You just press save and it just updates. And so if you're using Hammerspoon, this is a really great tool to use. You can do all sorts of things with Hammerspoon. Let's go back up to the API documentation and just take a look through you know, all the different kinds of things you can work with. So you can work with the console, you can work with an application chooser, you can work with the battery or brightness or turn on caffeinate to make sure your display doesn't turn off or do something with Apple script or alert on the screen or ba -ba -bum, what else can we do? Expose stuff. We can do stuff on the file system or deal with volumes, deal with a web server. Oh, wow, some of this stuff looks kind of new. Deal with location information or, you know, if uh, the mouse, if the mouse is in a certain place, do something. If a network is configured in a certain way, do something. You know, all these things that you can do with Hammerspoon. So let's show my code. So here I've taken my Hammerspoon in at Lua script and just simplified it to just the important parts for this. The first thing I do is I configure a USB watcher that just looks for changes to the USB devices attached to my Mac. That watcher calls USB device callback and USB device callback looks to see if Ergodocs EZ is on the list of things to be added or removed. Uh, and then it calls set keyboard. So set keyboard is just gonna say, okay, now if this value exists, then run the set US layout. So I've plugged in my Ergodox EZ. I want to switch it over to US layout as far as the Mac is concerned, because again, the Ergodox EZ has a firmware that says, you know, that's configured to use uh, Workman Dead. But if it's not in that list, then set Workman layout. And Workman layout is the setting the Mac to put in that software remapping to use Workman Dead. And then set US layout and set Workman layout. Just use this, uh, do an execute and execute this tool called Keyboard Switcher, uh, selecting a US layout or a Workman Dead layout. So what's this Keyboard Switcher? Well, I've got a, another tool I'm using called Keyboard Switcher. It's on GitHub. I'll include a link below. And you run it and specify a layout and it just switches to that layout. I'm a little concerned that it has been archived by the owner and now read only, but it still works really great for me. I use it all the time. Uh, there's no reason to stop using it. So that's really it. Plug in the keyboard and the layout changes. It's just magic. Unplug the keyboard and layout changes. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to switch. You know, actually I have a control, I think it's control option space on my back to switch keyboard layouts because I've changed that in the settings, but I don't even have to do that. It just works every time. Now I use Hammerspoon for a bunch of other things, but this was a simple example that I can demonstrate really quickly. And I thought you might get a kick out of seeing it. So if you find these videos interesting, well, if you find this one interesting, click on the like button below. If you find the series interesting, you know, yesterday I talked about AWS Lambda and Azure Functions. The day before, I think I talked about SAML and authentication. And I'm talking about all sorts of things that I find interesting or that I've learned about recently. And if you find them interesting, please subscribe. That definitely helps me understand that people like this stuff. And yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. So I'm trying to do this every day. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And you know, if you subscribe, you're kind of holding me to it, holding me to the idea of doing it every day. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye.